Invective Against Zeno and Diogenes Taken from On the Stoics by Philodemus of Gadara Excavated as the Herculaneum Papyri and translated by Tiziano Dorandi that Epicurus writes in the Timocrates that he performed the most disgusting acts with Metrodorus, and on account of their doctrine of pleasure, the Epicureans were expelled by the Philanians and the Messenians. Lacunae. They take these degrees as what is pointed at, as the saying goes. Lacunae. The Athenians towards the Macedonian, but Apollodorus places the capture of the city in the year when Antipater was archon before Archonaides, when the garrison was installed in the museum by Antigonus and the magistracies were abolished and all the government was performed by the will of one man. Therefore, it is clear, lacunae. Lacunae. He was 90 years old, just as in the letter which contains lacunae. Zeno, lacunae, 101 years, because from Clearchus to Arhenaides, in whose year Zeno died, is a length of 39 years and 3 months. Lacunae, lacunae. Preventing him from occupying the kingdom alone, and after the death of Lysimachus, lacunae. Gnatus, lacunae, having gained control of Macedonia, went off again to Asia, then later, Lacunae, to be king of the Macedonians, Lacunae, so that either when Euthius was archon, he wrote, Lacunae, or when Anaxocrates was archon, Lacunae. Everything which we say is confirmed by Hieronymus and Euphantus of Chalcidice, and also by Hegemon, the Lacunae and Apollodorus the grammarian, lacunae, and wishing to be a pupil of Diogenes the Babylonian, lacunae. Therefore neither did the Scythian write the letter to the lacunae, and the barbarism of language, lacunae, lacunae. The Republic of Zeno. It has some defects, but Zeno wrote it when he was young and foolish. Therefore, it should be granted some forgiveness. End quote. To those who say this, it should be replied that the man who intends to be a philosopher, even when he is somewhat inexperienced, must keep himself pure from all such things, both in word and in deed, and as he advances in years, he should eradicate the errors of his disposition, or otherwise correct them. Zeno was not always young, and the similar lacunae, and in other ways, he reveals that he kept these opinions throughout all his life, even the ancients of whom he was a great admirer, and the greatest ones of them all. Lacunae. Lacunae. Some say, Lacunae, that it has a very bad reputation among his successors, and they altogether affirm that the Republic is in error. But others say that Zeno was a complete nobody, and that he himself says concerning himself that he is a nobody, and therefore, in some sense, the Republic should not be considered as belonging to him, but they are misleading. Lacunae. Not to exist previously, but not to be a nobody. Perhaps the insignificance of his homeland or his family. Lacunae. Perhaps they attribute the disorderliness of the preceding sect to him also. These things, in respect of a defense for the Republic are not as far as lacunae, lacunae, of the Stoics, and it is agreed that the Republic is thoroughly bad. But they say, quote, just as Epicurus in his earliest writings is said to have been in error, but not to deserve condemnation, therefore neither should Zeno be criticized, end quote. But I say that the earliest writings of Epicurus, nothing disgraceful or impious can be found, but the Republic is full of such things, which is why we are condemning it, not because it has some common and widespread errors, which are unavoidable, since it is impossible for anyone to be infallibly wise right from the beginning, and such criticisms should not be made against 
truly pious men by ordinary individuals, and the change and correction that occurred. Lacunae. In the others and among the later Stoics. Lacunae. Lacunae. They overlooked the fact that at the beginning of the treatise, Zeno explains that the Republic sets forth what is appropriate for both the places in which he dwelt and the times in which he lived, and therefore he would deserve censure, if he did this, inasmuch as he used impossible principles to make laws for non-existent people, ignoring the people who really exist, and because, if this was his purpose, he was a wretched man to suggest such outrageous principles, and in what follows to attempt such reasonings as not to leave any excess of impiety, and lastly, that through other means he proposed laws of a similar nature. Both the former ones, of which he is an admirer, and the successors of the school of philosophy, some boldly claim that the Stoics ought not to be called to on account of the failings of Zeno. For if... Lacunae. Lacunae. Their philosophy was first established through Socrates and Antisthenes and Diogenes, and therefore they want to be called Socratics. But Stoicism received its important developments through Zeno, and all the Stoics, so to speak, assigned the prime position in the school to him, as well as them, so do Hippobotus and Apollodorus, who wrote the Chronicle. These judgments involve not only Zeno, but also the other Stoics, so that even if one of them disowns Zeno, such as Poseidonius, he will still keep the rest of the tenets of the school. The same thing should be said regarding that lacunae, that the whole Stoa lacunae, which is not accepted even by any of the Stoics, and indeed their leader, lacunae, lacunae, they are remote, and nothing different happens to them, because most of them are guarantors. To say that the Stoics accepted Zeno on account of his discovery of the end is the statement of an audacious man, because they also admire the rest of his doctrines, and it is unreasonable to accept the end and not interpret the other things in accordance with it, and in consequence of the end it is necessary to accept what is set out in the Republic. Considering this, it would have been better if he had not become wise, so that he would not be criticized for his faults. Therefore, they agree that he was a great man, even if not a wise man, and that he was the founder of their school. But if he had been a mediocre man, he would not have been so ambitious to fill his work with disgraceful doctrines and offensive. Lacunae. Lacunae. These doctrines are accepted by most of them, and admired by them, as being characteristic of their sect. But with regard to these noble men who accept the Republic as faultless, what could one say that was more absurd? They try to provide justifications only for the thigh-parting, when it is surrounded by so many evil things, although they have announced that they are justifying the whole Republic, not only part of it. But since some of our contemporaries have doubts, as they say about the Republic of Diogenes, in which they deviate from Stoicism, it must be said that it was written by Diogenes, as shown by its style, and as the catalogues and the libraries indicate. And Cleantes, in his On Clothing, mentions it as a work of Diogenes. He praises it and gives both summary of its contents and an account of some sections of it. And Chrysippus, in his On the City and the Law, mentions it, lacunae, in the Republics. And in his own Republic, when talking about the uselessness of weapons, he says that Diogenes says the same thing. Something which Diogenes seems to have written only in the Republic. And in his On Things That Are Not In Themselves Preferable, he says that in the Republic, Diogenes proposes a law that knuckle bones should be used as currency. This is contained in the work about which we are talking, and in the first book of Against Those Who Think Differently About Prudence, also in his on life according to nature, he mentions it, along with the impious statements it contains, and he expresses agreement with them. And in the fourth book of On Virtue and Pleasure, he often mentions the Republic and its contents with approval. And in the third book of his On Justice, he mentions the opinion about cannibalism. Lacunae. He recorded. 
Perhaps he talks about the same topic in the seventh book of his On Duty, Lacunae. This exists. And Diogenes himself in his Atreus and Oedipus and Philiscus repeats many of the offensive and impious statements in the Republic as being agreeable to him. And Antipater in his Against the Schools of Philosophy mentions the Republic of Zeno and the opinions of Diogenes, which he recorded in his Republic. He expresses admiration for their lack of emotion. And some say the Republic does not belong to the Sinopean, but to someone else. Some wicked person, not Diogenes. Lacunae We said that he was a cheater, and from the beginning of writing to the end, it is evident that Diogenes altogether reaches Lacunae. Let us now transcribe the noble sentiments of Diogenes and Zeno the Stoic in such a way as to get through it as quickly as possible. These two godly men believe it is right to trade our humanity in for a dog's life, to employ language that is frank and unrestrained, to masturbate in public, to wear a double cloak, to subject to scorn males who are in love with them and constrain by force those who do not welcome their advances. Lacunae. They hold that all children should be held in common. Lacunae. One should have sexual relations with one's sisters, mothers, and other close relations, as well as brothers and sons. One should never miss an opportunity to take part in sexual activities, even if a degree of force is involved. Women will draw men on and induce them by any means possible to couple with them, and if they do not find a partner, they will go to the marketplace in search of someone to service them, and, as occasion allows, they will have sexual relations with all and sundry male or female. Married men should have relations with their slaves, and married women should leave their husband's bed and go off with whoever strikes their fancy. Women should wear the same clothes and share in the same activities as men without distinction. They should go to the stadium and appear in the gymnasium naked and exercise with the men, concealing nothing. Lacunae. And most of the time, they eat their meals together. Lacunae. However, there is no difference, nor unburied. Lacunae. People should have their fathers killed and cease to acknowledge as their own any city or law that at present we respect. They hold that men, as they now are, are practically children, or mad, and should be treated as if they were sick. Lacunae. They should consider all friends false and untrustworthy, as enemies of the gods and of themselves, so that there is no trust. Lacunae. Lacunae. Guilty in all respects. So, of the things now considered good or just, none they maintain is so by nature. People should be treated as if they were senseless and immature, confusing what is just with what in reality is unjust and shameful. Lacunae. Of men and of women. Lacunae. Lacunae. Very shameful, such as Helen and Jocasta and Philomela. Instead of following the way of life of the Athenians and the other Greeks, they choose to immigrate to us Campanians and to ancient Etruria and Sardinia and the Persians, and set their frontier in the region of the Taurus, and, instead of the civilized manner of life of current times, they move back to the life of aboriginal men, if it is at all possible for them from the human lacunae. Lacunae. And this madness that consumes them like a cancer. But we, having purified our ears and our minds long ago, in no way partake in these dreadful infamies, as we have demonstrated. End of Invective Against Zeno and Diogenes Taken from On the Stoics by Philodemus of Gadara Excavated as the Herculaneum Papyri and translated by Tiziano Durandi.